All right. Welcome, folks. It is June 23rd, back for another weekly Bright ID AMA. Excited to have you. Uh, we don't have a specific topic, so we will delve into any and all things that people are interested. Uh, I'll kick off with the fact that last night I joined the Poop uh, community call uh, in their Discord. It was my first time going there. It's a great call. Uh, huge attendance, oh, 1,600, which I think is fairly common for them. Uh, one of the things that is, is worth exploring that is how many people were really there? Uh, they always give out POPs. Uh, they used the, the DGEN bot and learned a bunch of things about how they use that. Um, and, and, and I'm really curious how many actual humans that was. Um, I doubt it was 1,600, but was it, you know, was it 1,300 or was it 300? Don't know. Um, so uh, love to talk more about that. Um, but as we've talked about a couple times now, uh, I'm really eager to, to figure out good, easy integrations for Bright ID and Poop to work together. Um, right? there's, there's no reason that someone, that anyone, any one actual human should obtain two Poops to the same thing. Uh, and, and I think Bright ID can, can help with, with that part. Um, and, and we, we also want, you know, we used to give pull-ups out at these calls and it became problematic. We'd love to give, go back to giving pull-ups on these calls. So, so how can we find a mechanism that works for, for us here in this environment? Um, they also, uh, they mentioned that, you know, they use Discord partly because they can give pull-ups easily in that with the DGEM bot, but they can't have video. So that's the bummer for them. So they might like to be able to use Zoom, but it messes up their pull-up delivery. So th there are definitely ways to, to build community tools together. You know, they're an open source community. Let's figure this out together and, and make it awesome for everybody. Yeah, definitely. I want to do that. Um, yeah, we, we, we know lo lots of folks from Poop. We know um, the creator of the DGen bot. And um, yeah, I need to catch up on on the latest conversation that's going on in our integration channel, but but we that's something that I think both sides want is an easy bright ID integration because it's just it makes it better. Um, we could probably if we had that, we could probably bring the POAP back. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think we could bring the bring POAPs back here? Because I don't know if, it, I think the problem was that people would, we got like way more people, but they were just kind of sitting there doing nothing. And I'm guessing if you've got 1600 people, most people are just sitting there doing nothing. So, so, so they did, they, they use a number of, a number of tools. Uh, I think a bunch of the tools that they're using are good for um, spam prevention. And it was definitely reading in the chat. It, it was interesting to see. Uh, a lot of people confused about the difference between civil pre civil prevention and spam prevention. Um, a, a bunch of sort of the tools that, 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 that were mentioned definitely reduce spam. They're like, hey, uh, like one of them you had to send, you had to, you had to send one die, not, not for that, not for the regular community pull up, but for one of the merge calls, you had to send a die. And they're like, well, great. Well, that's a, that's a great spam prevention tool. And yes, it absolutely is. But that's nothing stopping from when that like if you're willing to pay multiple die, you can certainly send multiple multiple transactions. So effective uh, spam protection, not um, civil protection. Also, they they're saying, oh, there should, there should be recaptcha, and recaptcha again is a great tool to prevent um, prevent spam. But I'm perfectly capable of doing multiple recaptchas. They're a little bit pain in the butt. It slows it it slows down my process, but doesn't stop my ability to do it. Um, but the tools that they did use, and this is with the DGen bot. So for example, you had to be in the room for, I think, uh, at least 10 minutes. And that was like a track, a thing just tracked by the DGen bot itself. So no one had to manually do that. Um, and at the end, you, you tell the bot, you go into the channel, you press the slash claim command. And if you met the criteria that had been set out, it sent you the link. And if you didn't meet the criteria, it wouldn't send you the link. So I thought that was pretty cool. So they use Discord Stage to host those? 
Yeah, I see a nod from Mr. Mojo. And, and Mr. Mojo, you, you ran that meeting, right? Um, yeah, I'm like one of the main content creators for it. Awesome. You sound like a radio announcer when you're doing it. Do I? I, I try. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wish I had uh, this microphone. I don't know if you can see it because of the blur. I wish I had this microphone yesterday, but my internet cut out at like five minutes before the show. So it's like, let me whip out the laptop really quick and uh, tether to my phone here and <laughs> hopefully get all this set up in time. It was uh, it, it was very fun to uh, last second have to reset up everything, but hey. But yeah, um, using the DJ bot is something that we've been using the whole time. In fact, um, it's because of that distribution method. It's the reason why we decided to stick to Discord and why we have spoken with some other POAP distribution uh, people who we have asked them specifically, like, hey, could you build something that could we like have that could be great for video format distribution? Because it is an issue right now. Um, there's things like the Magic POAP dispenser, but even then, that can break every now and then. Um, if you just put up the single QR code, then it, you know, just, it don't matter, right? You just, boom, you pluck that QR code. It's, it's out there. If you have a secret word, uh, what I've been noticing with secret word is, uh, especially with Twitter spaces, it's like, okay, here's the secret word. It's only open for like five minutes. So it's either like you hear that secret word and you get it right there and then, or you don't get your pull up at all. And that's kind of an issue too, because I don't want to sit in a call for an hour or whatever, have to get up or I disconnect or I mishear what something is. And now all of a sudden I don't get it. You know, uh, so DJ bot's great in a way where it's, you're in there, you're, you're being, uh, I, I hate the word being tracked, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we can't see it. So we, we can only see like who, we 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 could see your username if we put it in but like you, you know it's not something that i would necessarily want to do that's why i kind of like bright id because it's like okay i know for sure that this username was here for this long and like you know <laughs> they're allowed to have it that's why i like bright id so a question i have for you though so with our call we do like that 1600 2000 people we don't know if that's 16, I said 16,000, 1,600 to 2,000 people. We don't know how many of them are real. How can we use something like Bright ID to like scale up? So is it sort of like a campaign where you have to be like, use Bright ID, you need to be Bright ID verified, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have to have a way to like, here's how you do it. Or is there some sort of way to mass scale, get people verified? Yeah, is that, so is that I, even worth it doing it in a mass scale? Um, yeah, I think well, I think it the the bigger the scale, the better it works, uh, the more useful it is. Um, and um, there's different strategies. If so, if you're asking about like how can it, how can how can you ramp up uh, people without like requiring it from everybody on day one is that is that part of the question like like how 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 can right. you ramp it slowly yeah. yeah so like it's essentially like okay um say we have an infrastructure where um i don't know I, i've been having this idea in my head because dgen produced it but uh you you get your criteria for getting your po app and everything but we want to prove that you're just one person in real and so we ask you to so like the unlock button you click the unlock button and it takes you the bread ID, for example. Now, of course, the first time or the second time, et cetera, that the person will see that, they may be like, oh, well, I don't have bread ID. Yep. What am I supposed to do? How could we, from like a show perspective standpoint, help somebody like that? Right. Yeah. So uh, I just want to thank, thanks for clarifying. I just want to make sure I had the question right. So I have some ideas, but um, Philip is also very experienced with um, different strategies that different apps have taken to kind of like not just jump into all or nothing, but but ramp up. Um, so did you want to talk about that, Philip, or do you want yeah, me to? Sure. I mean, a couple of things occurred to me. There's sort of two separate issues. One is how do you get your community verified? 
Um, so one is, you know, encourage them to get verified and, and give them some reason that they would want to, right? Let let them. There could be a you could have you, you could have a cool a cool pull up that is just for getting ready to be verified, right? That's that's specifically what it is. Um, but hey, um, or you know you could have. Philip, hey Philip, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I actually lagged for a moment. Could you repeat that answer? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So. You could, so you need to give uh, some incentivization to your community uh, to get Red ID verified, which could be a co-op that is available just to the Red ID verified people. Um, you know, you, you could also, uh, there are some tools, there are some integrations with Red ID. Uh, you, you might be surprised how many of your users already have it. I bet there's a, there's a, there's a large overlap with like Poop and Gitcoin users and a high percentage of Gitcoin users have Red ID because of the trust bonus. Um, so, uh, you know, we've also got, we're, we're in the midst of launching Unitap, which is a way to get, um, cheap, get, which is a way to get free gas on chain, uh, on, on inexpensive chains, but it's just sort of a, a helpful onboarding tool. So like there's reasons other than pull-ups to get Red ID. And the great thing about Red ID is, yeah, there's some, there's some friction to getting verified the first time, but once you are verified, it's trivially easy to use it for the next thing. Right, it's it's literally as easy as scanning a QR code. Um, so really, the friction's only only on the front end. Things that things that we could do. One is, uh, you know, we have many daily verification meetings. We could just encourage people to go to those. We'd also be happy to come in and host some of those, like in the POAP community specific, like so that they don't have to go out. They can just come. You know, we can't handle sixteen hundred at a time, um, but uh, we can certainly handle a hundred at a time. Uh, and, and and willing to do that multiple multiple times. Uh, there's also tools being built out that are going to better decentralize uh, how people can get verified, and and really that's how BrightID fundamentally is supposed to work. It was never supposed to be funneled through these connection parties, but the problem was there weren't enough people. Like there were too many people that didn't know anyone that were in BrightID already. Um, but we've got sort of tools that are that are in the midst of rolling rolling out that. Hey, you know, you could verify all of your friends, and they don't need to go anywhere. They just need to. They just need to hang. They just need to connect with you. Um, and and so we could. Uh, there is already what's called a seed group uh, inside Poap. Superfiz and Patricio are both members of members of that that seed group. So they already have the same magic powers that come to a verification. So anyone that anyone that connects to either Patricio or Superfiz. Uh, it gets gets verified, um, and we could make more members of your like internal trusted community uh, have those same those same superpowers. Uh, ha happy happy to do that. You know, we just need to get to them. But as long as like those folks trust you, it's it's easy to the, the, without their permit, without their without our without anyone's permission, they can simply add you to their seed group, and then suddenly you have those magic powers. Um, so th th those are ways to sort of uh, scale it up. The, the other thing that, that we've talked about for a lot of other communities uh, is, is like a, a situation where you get something a little better if you have Bright ID um, for a while, and then eventually you require it. So you'd be like, you could even have two, you know, I don't know, maybe two versions of the same pull-up. There's like, there's like the regular one, and there's the one with the gold, you know, the gold one, which means you're Bright ID verified or something. Um, also, we mentioned last night on the on the call that the idea of being able to do it retroactively would be cool. So it's like, hey, I qualified, I qualified for these pull-ups, but I don't actually get them until I'm ready to be verified, and then I might get the backlog of them. So right, you know, maybe I'm not going to do it for that first pull-up, but once it's like, oh, dude, if I just go through this thing, I will suddenly get three of them for my past action. Uh, that that might be more motivating. So there's. I really there's like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of being able to say, okay, I have like these, you start to stack up some pending POAPs. It's like you have these POAPs are pending. All you need to do is get Bright ID verified. And there's no time pressure on it. It, it can, you can take as long as you need to get Bright ID verified. And then you'll just retroactively get, get all those POAPs. I really like that. I hadn't heard that before, but I really like that idea. I imagine the only caveat to that uh, workflow would be uh, your sort of the bottleneck would be on the pull up end, right? So I think uh, per event, 
there's like an arbitrary, I think like a 30 or 60 day expiration period for claims. If there's, uh, for example, it's not like you'd be able to sit on indefinitely those those claims, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. So we just need to make sure that whatever verification level that they need to achieve is easily achievable within 30 days or whatever the time limit is. Shouldn't right. be a problem. Right. If you show up trying to get the pull up and then suddenly they're like, oh, you have to have a bright ID and you're like, oh shit, I don't have bright ID. It's really nice to be like, oh, you can go, go, go ahead and do it now. It's it's like it's like when people make uh, Gitcoin donations. So you get an increased matching bonus. As long as you get the verification by the end of the round, you get it. Even if you donated three days ago, as long as you get it after the fact, that's fine. And I think that is a better, that is a better flow. So it would be great if we could have it be, hey, this, <laughs> You, you, you've got, hey, you have 30 days to claim the pull-up anyway by pull-up standards, so you should have 30 days to get your ready verification. Like, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So I think when we talk to um, the people that are working on the integration, we should mention that as the ideal flow. I think that makes the most sense. That, that's, that seems like a very, very elegant solution to the, to the, the problem of, oh, I don't have it right now. What do I do? Yeah, that and, and getting getting more seeds and more people that that think, hey, it's right. it's, it's cool to, it's cool to to share this with the community and be be the be the gateway to the community. Right, like making bright ID connections is fun. So I mean, it's kind of like po ops. Po ops are fun too. Like this is something that people enjoy doing. And so if you have something, so you you can have your regular um, community call, and then you can also have something that's just like a short meeting kind of like a, a cozier get to know you type meeting that's maybe limited to the first hundred people that show up and you just make do a group connection which um for a hundred people could take maybe 10 minutes or something um and then you can you can also just like get to know each other and it's kind of fun so, so that can be done on a semi-regular basis. It doesn't have to be a strict schedule. You keep bringing schedule. up the word fun. And I think that's important. One thing that's really not fun is, is the bad guys getting lots of the pull-ups. Like what makes your pull-up cool is that like, it's real. Like having a ticket stub to a, a cool concert you went to is neat. Like, you know, it has memories, you know, having a photocopy fake ticket stub for a concert you didn't go to or that like, like, that's not fun. Like, no, nobody thinks that's fun. Yeah, that's why I like real life events for pups too, because you show up to an event, like you have to be there. Um, it's kind of, well, one of the things I like to talk about is like the quality of your attendance. When you show up to an event, like your body is physically there. Like I would say that's pretty quality attendance. You know what I mean? Like you actually went to the physical location, but when it's virtual, it gets really difficult because Sure, somebody might show up, but as we've been talking about, it's like, you know, there's things that people can do that uh, you get all the things. Yeah, it's like you, you wouldn't have like 20 different ticket stubs from events that you didn't go to. It's kind of weird, right? Well, I mean, I, I'm sure that there's somebody out there that collects stuff like that because they think it's cool. But like in terms of like it being some sort of widespread um, like behavior amongst people, Bob has that. But yeah, like ticket subs don't have that. My, I would be surprised if there's not some person that got a hundred pull-ups from last night from that event. Because when, when we see civil behavior, that like that, that's 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 really what what tends to happen. Um, you, you're more likely to see one person that gets a hundred than like five people that each get five. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree with that. That's something we've noticed with civil attacks um, that it, cause everyone asks that, like, that's the first pro that's the first attack that people think about. Like, well, what if I just show up twice and, and get two? Um, like imagine a, an in, in person event. It's like you go out the back door and come back in. Or something. So they like that. Uh, and I, ooh, I got two, I exploited the system. Well, that's not really what we worry about. Um, what we, and that's not usually what you see. Like you don't see a hundred people getting two, you see like one person getting 300 or something like that. They figured out a way to like game the system. And it's usually because they already, they come with a bunch of like fake accounts that they've built up over time and they've, they've got them 
and they just wherever they go they bring their fake accounts and they get more of whatever they're supposed to get than they should and that's that's really the the problem that's and the in, main problem that we're trying and to in my experience that's what brings about the really surprising uh parts of civil attacks too is usually if like one person has two accounts they don't do anything super strange with the system sometimes a bit but it's the the things where one person has 100 accounts that really kind of makes people very surprised by how things go and it really changes other people's experience of the platform by the way hi i'm a <laughs> engineer that um i used to be in charge of our like anti-duplicate project at uh, oh, cool. a company that was doing some like freebie stuff and trying to get people in and there were of course people trying to get all the freebies and so it's cool to see that you know that problem i kind of gave up on years ago might have some some kind of long-term solution <laughs> anyway yeah, um, that's great to have is tough, right? It's 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 a, it's a few bad actors that ruin it for everybody else. That like most you can have such an outsized just, influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. most people would. It, it's like at, at Halloween, right? You know, sometimes people put out a bucket of candy on the door. They're not there, and they say, "Please take one." And if you if someone goes and takes two, it's not a big problem. But some kid always comes and just dumps the whole bucket into their bag, and it's like, well, now you've ruined it for everybody. And, and we just see that time and time again. Yep. And, and like you notice, you gave up on the problem because it's so hard. So it's not a so it's not a thing that we should try to solve on a project by project basis. It needs to be a big communal, like public goods solution that any that any project that wants to use that solution can easily tap into, like without there being barriers, without there being exclusion, without there being significant cost. And that's what Bright ID is trying to be. We've always described this. It's like public goods, community infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> it's, that, <laughs> it's a civil problem. It's why we can't have nice things like, like faucets, like the Bitcoin faucet that, um, that uh, Gavin uh, Andreessen wanted to have. It's like, well, that's yeah. why we can't have it. So. You could get five Bitcoin. Five Bitcoin was what they gave out in the Bitcoin faucet. And he had to turn it off because of the bad actors. Had the bad actors not come and abused it, it would have kept running. Like he was happy to onboard people by giving them five Bitcoin. He just wasn't happy to give the bad guys like all of it. So mm -hmm. imagine if that had could have just kept running. Yep. So I'm really excited for Unitap. Like I like I see Unitap as being like the big app that hopefully not not only brings a ton of people into bright id but brings a ton of people into crypto because it's like we have all these like right now we have a bunch of fence sitters who when the bull market comes they'll come in and they'll buy a bunch of crypto and be like yay i'm i'm pro crypto i i love crypto and then but they don't do anything with it they just and 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 they'll sell it when the bad times comes but what we need are people that actually and that's what Unitap is all about. It's it's like, here is your here's your crypto. Come get a little bit for free, and here's where you go and use it. Like here's how you actually use it. And um, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of the ramp up is still kind of tricky. Getting things like MetaMask is still tricky for people, but like that's that's what we're trying to that's what we're trying to solve. And so I'm really excited for Unitap. I think it's like, I think it's Gavin Andreessen's dream that finally realized uh, if anyone hasn't tried it i just posted a link here in the chat i encourage you to go 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 try it just so you can see the mechanic you know right now all it's giving out is a, a penny worth of x guy on this chain uh, or a bunch of you know dust on on test nets but see how it works and, and that that same mechanic that's giving out that tiny amount of dust can give out as much as much as people are willing to, to put into the thing uh right now it's sort of set up as a as a gas station uh, we're going to be building out a tool that also does distributions of tokens. Um, the gas side, it gives it as a relay service. So like you just sort of like you link your bread ID and you say, hey, please send it to this address from like how a POAP works. Uh, on the token side, you're going to have to actually make an on-chain transaction to, to claim those tokens. Oh, but where are you going to get the gas? Hey, we just gave it to you on the other side of the free gas station. So that way, that way some project that wants to onboard new people to their community. Well, they're like, okay, I've never done a crypto transaction. What am I going to do? Well, cool. You can go here, get free gas, get the RPC set up for the random network that you're on, and claim the tokens to this, this community. And now you're in. 
and it's and, and it's a unique person. You're not you're not getting you're not getting bots and spam, and and we we want that to just be wide open and available to to any and every project and chain that would like that, and tons of them need it. So we hope it can just be a, a quick, easy place to onboard people because we all know it's hard to onboard people on crypto. Uh, if you've been here a while, you take it for granted. You know, I use MetaMask every day. I don't think I helped a friend recently set up a ledger and MetaMask. You know, he's a smart computer guy. It took us 45 minutes and he was confused and like, and he had me right there and it's still hard. Imagine if you don't have a friend that's used to doing this, like going in blind. It's worse I mean, than hey, us insiders think it is. Uh, I mean, we all started at step one. So like everybody starts with zero XP and we build up from there. So just think about the first time you ever interacted with this stuff. And um, some maybe had a better time than others. I, I know I was like, what the heck is all this? So yeah, I, I could totally see how even like smart tech people in their first seeing this kind of stuff can get very confused. And that's why when you have those seamless and streamlined experiences, like you're trying to create here with Unitap, um, especially being able to onboard. I actually really like that idea. I know that um, like Trader Joe on AVAX, whenever you first bridged over, they would sprinkle a little bit of AVAX. So you could at least do like one transaction on their platform so that you could like, you know, get more. And I, I, I always liked that idea. And so to see it being repurposed and recorporated into something else. Excellent. Like, awesome. I, I love that. I just learned of this. Yeah, I think we'll get Avalanche on there. Yeah, you had something, um, Victor? Yeah, I mean, that it, sometimes that is true, but the necessity is sometimes make the human thrive. Because, uh, I mean, there is a lot of people that happen with the smartphones, the smartphones. There is a lot of people that doesn't have anything to do with computers, with technology. But in the moment that the friends, the body, I mean, the, the old people that doesn't have anything to do with technology. Their friends and the booty was using Facebook or using WhatsApp groups. They have to start using smartphones. And right now there is really old people that never in his life touch a computer that they have Netflix in their smart TVs. And they, they know about that because the necessity to do it forced them to, to learn about it. So sometimes you uh, doesn't have that necessity with the crypto space. You don't have the necessity to be here because you have your bank account. So you have that kind of stuff. Or you don't see the really, really advantage of this decentralization or that kind of stuff. So the people are not forced to learn. So it will be difficult every time because it no, they don't have the necessity in their real life to do that transition. Yeah, I, I think once people start seeing um, like all of the all of the things that like a bunch of the real life things transition over to crypto, like paying your rent. And when, once people realize that it's just having programmable money is just so much more convenient than working through banks. Once people once people actually get that, I think that's that's when um we start to see it like once once a like like right now a landlord can't say oh yeah i only rent like if you want to rent my property you've got to pay in crypto like right now you can't you can't really do that um it's too exclusive but i don't know maybe someone will start doing that maybe maybe you'll start looking at airbnb and you'll be like man i guess i need crypto to to go to these places and so streaming start... paychecks you know like when i first saw sablier uh, you know, it, it was just, it was just eye-opening, right? Most people, you get paid every two weeks. Why? Like, like that, that's a, that's a weird remnant of, of an old system. Why, why shouldn't you get paid every second? Uh, I don't see any, any compelling reason. If like, if that can, if that can be a thing, well, why not, why not stream? You know, it's like, Hey, you get 60 K a year in your salary. Why shouldn't that just stream? Kind of off topic, I have, I have a question on um, more Bright ID stuff, if yeah, that's please. all right. Yeah, it's cool. I hadn't heard about Unitap before. Love that. Um, and I love that being built on top of Bright ID. I think you guys said in a, maybe it was a bankless thing way back, you wanted to, you know, have a lot built on top. And I'm, I'm curious, um, 
what else is being built on top right now? Because I, I have something that I'm kind of looking at. Um, I know we were saying fun events that get people to do Bright ID stuff, but also I think one of the draws would be the benefits that they get from Bright ID stuff, like being registered in UNITAP. And, and so I'm curious, what what's the kind of state of people building on that right now? Are there a few groups? Are there forums? Are there? Uh, someone can post the link to apps. Yeah. So the, the there, there's the there's there's the link. Uh, it's unit tap, and if there's a there's a link there. Um, so the the, the other the, the, the biggest integration so far, uh, Gitcoin uh, has been one of our, our biggest all along. You get more matching, um, and the, you the high, you get the highest amount for Bright ID integration of of any any of the trust bonuses, um, uh, because it is it is both. Uh, fairly civil resistant, even at the low, they're using the lowest level of civil resistance that Bright ID offers, but it's still quite effective um, and it's pretty easy to do. Uh, so rabbit hole uh, is another um, monster integration for us. So uh, it, rabbit hole's been, been kind of funny. So there you can do sort of uh, learn and earn activities. You go actually do on-chain crypto activities and you can earn, earn tokens. Um, and, at times they've been they've been frustrated by the the bottleneck that is bright ID that oh like our users have to go jump through these hoops and some of them don't want to so like we lose people in the funnel, but one time uh, without meaning to they forgot to require bright ID on a task and within minutes a um, whole pot of like a thousand were gone and they were like what is going on and they were like oh we forgot to turn bright ID one time like it, it took minutes for the bad guys to just. Extract, extract the extract the value. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> the bad guys really are bad. They they want to take every bit that they can, unfortunately. And, and and hey, I'm sure they live in harder situations than I do. And like you know, they need to feed their families and whatnot. But Rabbit Hole and the partners that it works with, they're not trying to give all the funds to one person. They're trying to give it to unique individual users. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I am. Um, I mean, what I'm looking at doing is I have some kind of online theater group stuff and some in-person theater group stuff that we've been playing with some crypto PO apps for just attending. And um, it's, it's specifically for people who are not used to doing theater and it's almost like improv games and stuff online or just kind of, uh, I see a, I see an ETH Denver shirt there. It was an ETH Denver finalist back in 2020 for this. Oh. Um, it was a, uh, so yeah, we're, we're looking at, doing some storytelling around public goods, some storytelling around, I mean, just explaining this kind of stuff. It's, you say anti-civil to my tech engineer friends, let alone my mom or my grandma, and they have no idea what you're talking about. And so kind of drawing out the, the issues here um, in, in a way that's really accessible. And like you said, like fun ways to get people to do some of this stuff and kind of have some benefits from, I'm, I'm um, looking at putting together more events and stuff like that. So yeah. yeah. If, if if that's if it's, if it's like a regular event and like you're gonna be there and actually interacting with people, right? So again, you could become a bright ID seed, and then all they need to do is connect to you to become verified. So they don't they don't need to jump through hoops. And really, bright ID works better in person than than it, it it's okay online. It's better in person because then like you, you know like you you know you're you're touching them. It's 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 easier to remember. You can you can, it's easy for them to get to connect to each other. And, and bread, connecting Bread ID in person is funny. It's actually fun. We we watch people like smile and laugh when they're doing this. And and what it is is like we you know they talk about like we all seek like connection and and, and validation like in our lives like from a, like a deep philosophical sense. That's literally what you're doing is validating the humanity of another person, and it feels good to have people validate you. And like that, like it's, it doesn't seem like it would be fine. And, it, and it's, it's not, it, it's fine online, but it doesn't evoke emotion the way that it does in person. People like doing it in person. Like at mm -hmm. conference, and unfortunately, our team is really not the conference going folks and with COVID and whatnot, but like Friday verification at conferences is fun. 
Yeah, it's it's definitely a venue I want to do a lot there. We do some in person. I, I'm in Denver, so there's a group we're trying to get that. I mean, the theater stuff's fun too. I think it's more fun, especially for non-techie people, for the same reasons though that you're saying of being in a space with people and validating each other and listening to each other and making fun of each other and you know what all of that nonsense. It's all good, <laughs> um, and that's why I think it could be powerful because whether that's going on online because it works pretty well online, and whether or it's going on in person or at conferences or regularly through a meetup, whatever there. It's fun whether or not you're doing the weird crypto thing. You can just see that some people are doing that and maybe you want to, maybe you realize, oh, they're actually, they get some money off this Unitap thing or maybe I should sign up for that and kind of have a an easy way that they could be around it without like, oh, I'm going to this meeting because it's a POAP crypto, whatever meeting thing. Um, so hopefully trying to hover in that space that brings people in and let them talk about it without having to commit to it, but also being around those people who do know how to spend 45 minutes setting up a ledger, if that's what you decide you're into and, and trying to create. So yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, the idea, the, the, the seed idea, that's what you, I think Adam said earlier with the magic powers that, yep. um, yeah, I think that's definitely sounds like what I'd be interested in trying to, yeah, definitely. to pull together at some point. So yeah, we should uh, set you up. It's, it's really easy to do. Um, uh, so just come by and talk to us later and we'll, we'll set you up. We can give you a form to, to fill out. It's really easy to fill out. You just take a couple minutes and then we can get you on the road to setting up a seed group. But as far as actually using Bright ID, once you've got it, once you've got that verification, um, the easiest thing you can do with it is if you have a Discord server. So let's say that you've got a theater group and that um, for meeting kind of like in between sessions or whatever, just just for hanging out or for whatever, maybe planning things or whatever, you've got a, you've got a Discord group. Um, the Bright ID Discord integration is, is very simple. You just invite the Bright ID bot to your server. Anyone who's Bright ID verified um, just types in a bot command and it's like, okay, yeah, I know who you are. You've linked um, your, your Discord to your, to your Bright ID. And the actual linking is just scanning a, a code uh, that, that it'll pop up on the on the mm -hmm. Discord screen. They'll pop up a code. You just scan it, and then it links. And yeah, then if you've already linked for a different server, then you're then you just have to type in a bot command, and it'll find you. We um, that that's a way that someone could do uh, a really easy POAP claim thing. Right. So put the put the claim bot in a channel that's gated by Bright ID verification status. So you can't you yep. can't even type in you can't go to that channel unless you're Bread ID verified. So that that like that would be a thing that would require almost no work. Mm -hmm. Right. You just have to have two bots. So those two bots work well together, the the regen bot and and Bright ID. There's been talk about like merging their powers into a single bot, which I think we'll do at some point because it just makes sense. Um, but yeah, you can invite both the POAP bot and the Bright ID bot to your Discord server and you can just start using them right away. It's almost no effort. Do you find that those help with, um, you know, the kind of moderation and anti yep. or keeping out spam and stuff like that yeah. from the gate of channels? Yeah, yeah I mean, there's, it, right. The, well, we're sure that there are, there are civils in, in the low level of Bright ID verification because we intentionally set the bar low enough that it's easy to get. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not a heavily, there's no, but there's no bots. Everybody, we, we, yeah, we, we know people have civil accounts, um, mm -hmm. but we're not, we're not aware of any instances of there being bot accounts where there isn't somebody that actually like went through and jumped through the hoops personally. It's like, hey, yeah, you can go to multiple verification parties. Our, our stars are better at, are better at finding them than you'd think they would be because they, they practice this a lot, but they certainly, they certainly don't get them all. Um, but your, your what's your stars? Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so the people stars. that run the verification calls, we call Bright ID stars. Cool. Like, oh, because the, the graph that they have must be very stellar. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and it's funny. So, so like, um, so like, uh, Ashraf is is our is our our brightest star. I don't know. He's like twenty thousand connections, um, right? The vast majority of those connections, though, are, are we call, we call just net connections. He doesn't really know these people. He's not he's not like deeply vouching for them. Kind of what he's vouching for is they came, I saw them, they acted, they, they, they were they were humans, they weren't bots, um, 
They they acted in not overtly suspicious ways that like they, they passed his low his low level um, sort of test. Uh, while uh, I've got fifteen hundred connections, but hundreds of many hundreds of those are sort of already known connections where I had more interaction with the person. So uh, like he's got many, many more connections, but from the algorithm, my, my, the algorithms view my connections as, as stronger. So like it drops me at the center of the graph uh, because the, the, so it's not about the, just the, the number of connections that you have. It's gotta be the strength of those connections uh, as, as well. And right. it's, it's easy to find Ashraf on the, on the social graph because like, here's the point. And it's just this like crazy constellation around him. Um, we, uh, we've talked a little bit about the, the aura game, which is how we're gonna decentralize trust in the graph. And, and Superfizz uh, recently started playing aura and, and he made this region and it just, you know, he, he did it all in one night. So he went and raided 150 people. Uh, in Aura, and, and you know, we, he created this this region on the graph, um, and it's great because that would look like a Sybil attack, except that we know who Superfiz is and we trust him. So that's not it's not problematic that he created this like island because like we understood what he's doing. Um, yeah, the transitive property helps. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> And, so, and Aura um, very much operates on the on, on transitive trust. So right now with the seed process, it's sort of centralized. You have to come to us. We like collectively look at you and we go, okay, like here's here's some authority. We can give you mm -hmm. a certain, literally a number of like people that you can bring in. We give you a quota, like here's 200. You can you can verify 200 people. Uh, and then hey, if you do a good job with that, we'll look and be like, okay, now you can do 500 people in the future. Um, Makes sense. In, Makes sense. In or, but like you would need, you don't have any authority to give authority to the next person. Like they'd still have to come back to us in mm -hmm. the game of aura. If I give it to you, now you can give it to the next guy and he can give it to his mom and he can, you know, he can give it yeah. to his. But I would do it because I pick the right next guy who I trust and gets that, you know, yeah, because. And if I think that your friend down the line is being sketchy, I can come to you and say, you need to find out what's going on downstream from me. If you fix it, great. If you don't fix it, my remedy is to remove my authority that I'm sending to you, right? Yep. And, and your goal then is like, if, if I'm taking it away, then you need to be getting it from more than one place. Like don't have only one source of authority. If you're getting it from five people, who cares if I take it away from you? So uh, th this lets, this lets everybody be sort of self-sovereign um, in, in, in how the authority moves around. So we'll, yeah, we'll so back to, your, back to your other question, Drew, about like um, gated channels in Discord, Bright ID gated channels and how effective they are against spam. We definitely notice a difference. We have a mixture of gated and non-gated channels in our Bright ID Discord server. It would be awesome if you, if, if, if enough people used Bright ID that you could almost take it for granted that that real people had had a Bright ID verified account, you could use it as like a gate into your server. Like you can't even come in the server unless you're Bright ID verified. Um, we're not there yet, so we can't really do that. But we have- My community might try that. I mean, just that, you know, we, yeah. and it would be like, we just don't think there's, it's worth doing things online that aren't, you know, one person, one account we just don't see value in having a an open thing there and we're just trying it this way and so yeah. you know there's other ways you know you can you can email the the support channel if you really need to talk to somebody and you don't have bright id and just <laughs> those are your options <laughs> yeah so eventually what we're going to do we're going to transition our discord server because once we get too many people right now we have like thirty thousand people it's it's still manageable but the time is going to come where it's it's like we can't provide one-on-one -on -one support to everybody. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have the channels that you can get into without being Bright ID verified are just like frequently asked questions, instructions, 
that we've compiled from like years of gathering answers from people on what the common roadblocks are to getting verified. You've got it. So you've got to kind of like self-serve or hopefully you'll have a friend. Like that's the best way to become Bright ID verified is because you know someone and they help you get verified. Um, so hopefully you can get past that process. If we'll, we'll just have like these static channels where no one, you're not interacting with someone, but you can at least see like, these are the instructions. And then you've got to do that. Once you get past that, once you become Bright ID verified, then it unlocks all the other channels. So that's eventually what we're going to do. Um, but, to, but also, uh, so as far as like the spam attacks that we've seen, way, way fewer spam attacks in the, um, in the Bright ID gated channels. The only one that we've seen, there was, there was a really bad one. And what, what it actually did was um, if you clicked the link and did the things that the spam message was telling you to do, it would steal your Discord account. And the problem with that is it was stealing accounts of people that were like already Bright ID verified and, um, you know, had, this was their real actual account. It stole their account and then it would spam out the message again. So that was something that none of the, none of the moderation stuff tools that the discord gives you could handle that attack. And it was, I saw it on a ton of different servers had this problem. Wow. And um, it was something that only discord could solve. So we were basically just like, man, this sucks. Like when is discord going to solve this problem? Because we can't, we as moderators can't solve this because when it's like taking over people's accounts, we can't, we can't like, do we ban that person knowing that that's actually their real account? Um, like it was really tricky, but that's other than that one, problem for everyone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a really bad discord problem. Eventually they solved it. I'm not sure how they did it, but, but they solved it because it went away and we don't see it anymore, but it was really bad on practically all discord servers for like a week or so. Outside that, that specific, very complicated problem. Uh, another benefit of the bright ID discord bot is that, um, if you, if you ban someone, because they, they are being actually bad, you know, they're saying inappropriate things, whatever. They can't just create a new Discord account and come back because they hmm. can't link, they, they can't link their Bread ID to another Discord account. So it, it's a way to permanently exclude someone from a community if if that's what that community want wants to do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 I, I, you know we 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 haven't we haven't had that. But I'm sure there's communities, especially communities that, that maybe are, are of, a, of a, a, a group that's maybe more vulnerable and has like haters that come in and, you know, say horrible things and that really disrupt that, that the harmony of that community, <laughs> which is like to keep, keep those, you know, those bastards out forever. But it's trivially easy to set up a new Discord account and they can just hop right back in again. So that's a nice thing about, again, about what it is, you can, you can permanently keep someone out. So does that information, any of that information, if somebody gets banned, is there any way for that information to flow back into Bright ID as feedback about that, about that, uh, that entity that's holding that Bright ID? So we, we keep, just for privacy reasons, we like to keep all the apps segregated. So if you get banned on Discord, you're not going to be, that, that information will not say anything about you in any of any of the other apps that you use and that might trigger people apps. to do things it, it, so it could be so it is not currently true but i bet the discord bot could be made i mean it's it's one it's one bot so within the discord bot they, they do know who you are across all your servers yeah right yeah. now it's the same it's using the same discord account across all servers for convenience um, that does pose a, a, a threat to privacy because it means that, um, but but that's a, that's something that Discord is already that's already like a, a feature. Yeah, Discord already knows. That's, that's something that Discord does. So Bright ID is not making it worse, but yeah, because because you have one account for all Discord servers, Bright ID uses that same one account. And so um, if you get banned on one Discord server from Bright ID, you'll be banned from all the other Discord servers um, that, that Bright ID uses. You won't, you, well, let's put it this way. You won't be able to um, make a new account 
so let's say let's say you get if, if the because there is such a thing as like a a discord wide ban if if you get that and so you can't access your discord account anymore you won't be able to get uh link a new one with bright id if you get banned from one server because one server thinks you're a bad actor you could potentially it could potentially send that information to the other discord servers and say hey fyi this person was banned from this like this bright id user who maybe created a second discord account now was also banned from this other server so you could share that information between discord servers so it seems I think, like, yeah go ahead go ahead no the, the the thing with the bot is that you need to understand that the bot is going to give you a role in in the in the server it's a role it's just a role so you will be banned i mean the when you are banned from that server from that server the problem is that you already use your bride ID. you already use your bride ID account in this in this discord account so you cannot link another new discord account to that bride ID. So exactly you, that's, that's yeah. so what I'm interested in is the idea that like your bright ID account takes a great amount of care and feeding and you have to care about it. Right. That's the idea here. You can't, you, anybody can burn discord accounts, but the idea is you're not going to burn this. If you, so if you, if you go somewhere and it requires this, maybe you just turn right around if you have any bad ideas about what you're going to do. So exactly. it seems like just simply having bright ID on board whether it's a DJ, whether it's a you know a Discord channel or an, or an app, yeah, but Bright D is not Bright D. It should be like that because Bright D wants to prove that you are a human being, uh, that you are unique, that you doesn't have more than one account. Bright yeah. D doesn't want to take your humanity from you. So if you are banned, if you get, I mean, if the Bright D is the only the, the only thing that proves that you are a human being and taking that from you. So what are you now? You you cannot be stop being a human being. Yeah, I see what both of you are saying. One, I, I think what Drew, I see what you're saying, Victor. You yeah, you don't want like the the repercussion of being a bad actor. Let's say that you're let's say that you're just, you know, spiot hate speech on a Discord server and you deserve to be banned for life from that Discord server. Um, that shouldn't mean that maybe you can't, now you can't use Unitap. Like that shouldn't that shouldn't carry across in that way. So I see I see what you're saying, Victor, and I think I understand also uh, what Drew is saying, which is like that, like it's almost it, in some ways it's almost a permanent record. Like it it doesn't it's not maybe not a permanent record that can cross over to other apps, but um, yeah, you you think twice about your behavior because it's like wow, like. I will never, I, I can never escape this. Like they'll know that if I try to come back, they'll know it's still me and I got to be careful about my behavior. So right. that we definitely, we want it to have that effect on people for sure. Well, there probably, it seems like there's also got to be on the, on the side of the dApps that are using this, like a pretty measured approach about how they, how they, how quickly they ban people, you know, as it's connected to Bright ID. Because it will also cause feedback in the bright ID system through humans. You know, any right. human that's involved in a situation where somebody's a bad actor, if they've got a connection with that with that person, then you know they they might change things about how they're rating that person. They might change a lot of things, right? So it, it, so it, it could it, affect it, them. It's wildly different. So bright ID only cares about sort of the. The connection information of the humans, not about the the choices that they make. Um, we, we've we've talked a bunch about the possibility of adding like good badges. So so I could say, hey, Duke's been a really good guy in my community. Duke, I would like to give you the the bread ID like you know the bread ID plus. Uh, Boy Scout and, budget. And then you would and then you would accept that and, and, and it would become part of the record. While if I want to say, hey, Duke is a dickhead, I can't just drop, I can't drop that on you. I can't, I can't force that onto the graph that that only we would only allow people to to do that like if it's you have to receive it. 
that's that's what would put it and people wouldn't yep. choose to receive the negative ones yeah it's um, a soul bound action so so banning like a permanent ban that's something you can do for your domain you can say like okay in our domain you are not welcome here for the rest of time because we you know we're enforcing a permanent ban through right id but if you want to give someone a good actor certi certificate that they can take to like another DAO or another server and say, hey, look, I've got, you know, two years of, of good behavior record from this other place. And I'm, a, I'm an active, I've shown that I'm an active participant in this other DAO or something like that. That could be really valuable. Um, and that's along the lines of um, um, a couple a couple technologies that that people have been that have been gaining interest recently. One is the notion of soulbound. So with our, so Bright ID has been working on soulbound tokens, and there's been some some talk and research on it recently. But in our implementation of it, a soulbound is something that you have to accept. You have to say, yes, I want this soulbound. I want it attached to my Bright ID. Then you can recover it, um, even if you lose everything. You lose your wallet that ha that held the token you you lose your bright id you lose everything you can go back through social recovery which is a feature of bright id get your bright id back and then take get that token back using a rescue operation they'll take it out of the old wallet that you don't ha that you no longer have access to and move it to your most recent wallet um so that makes it soul bound but you're not going to no one can force a soul bound thing on you so that's why that's why it's good things and not bad things and then the other thing uh, is the the Gitcoin passport. Um, you may have noticed this in this recent round of of Gitcoin. They use something called a passport that's a little different than the trust bonus. And uh, the thing that's different is it's not some centralized thing that sits on their server like the old trust bonus did. Instead, it's this decentralized, self sovereign thing that you have control of. You get to basically create your own passport. If you, if for some reason you say, well, I don't want anyone to know that I'm uh, a proof of humanity user, so I'm not going to, I'm just not going to add that to my passport. That's your choice. It's, it's your, it, you are in complete control of this, of this um, self-sovereign thing. And, um, and uh, like Bright ID is one of the things you can add to it. So you could imagine a passport where you collect a bunch of different stamps from different apps that you've used that say like, okay, you're a good user in this app, you're a good user in that app. There's a little bit of a trade-off there because if you wanna stay anonymous or pseudonymous and you start collecting a bunch of these, it's like, okay, people might be able to figure out who you are based on the different, the different uh, things you've collected in your passport. So, you, but you get to choose. You, if you're like, well, I, you know, I have this cool badge it comes from this one DAO, but there's only 10 people in the DAO and I don't want people to know. So I'm just not going to add that to my passport, but it's totally up to you. So once I accept the, this token, it's tied to me and I can recover it if I need to so that I can do things with it. I can, I can change state with it or change state around it. But once I accept it, it is tied to me in the blockchain and I can't remove it. From yeah, it's tied to you as a person. I th so you can remove it. The way you remove it is you just stop using that wallet that it's, that it's tied to and don't recover it to a new wallet. And that's how you lose it. Because it's tied to your Bride D. Yeah, account, so those tokens to are in a wallet right. and it's tied to your person, but if you want your person to um, kind of, okay, so uh, let's say that you have a new wallet and, um, and you want to like start fresh, but you want to keep the same bright ID, you could just choose not to recover the things that were in your old wallet. So you could, you could kind of start fresh that way if you, if you wanted to. So what I'm interested in is the idea that once this thing is tied to me, then that's all Bright ID is doing. They're just providing a token that I've accepted, and that's it. That's all we're. That's as far as we're going. Yep. And and, and still, no no one can tell which Bright ID controls that wallet. They know that that wallet 
must have a must be a breadedy user because that like thing required breadedy to get it, but you can't you don't know which user it is. Okay, so that's what I'm curious about. Is now we now if correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're saying is application builders can't just build things that reference that and use it to make changes in my life without you know without me. Uh, being aware of it because it's not tied to Bright ID. It follows the same the same way Bright ID uh, works without having to give anything away. Yeah, that's what you're saying. This is. Yeah, yeah, that sounds that accurate. So it's up to you. It's like opt in. It, it, so let's say that a community says, "Okay, because we have so many applicants trying to get into our DAO, we're only accepting people that are from one of these." 10 DAOs. Like you have to have some experience with one of these 10 DAOs, otherwise you can't join our DAO. Um, then what you could do is you could say, okay, sure, I've got um, I've got this this other um, this other stamp of approval that I got from this other DAO. It's tied to my bright ID. I will choose to share that one with this other DAO. Um, and that's something you can do. So, it, so it's, it's up to you. you. And maybe you have three of them, but you only want to share one because you only need one. Um, and that's fine. Say, but if you, if you put those three in the same wallet, well, then they're going to they're gonna know that one person controls those three because, well, you, sent, you gave them your address showing, okay, this is my address. And look, there's two other stamps in here. Someone could figure out that, okay, well, whatever person this is, is the constellation of these three communities. Um, or it, you could have put those three stamps in three different wallets, all bright ID validated, but like no, but there's nobody that can see that those three are all connected to the same bright ID. Like only only you know that. But then at some point, someone's like, "Hey, you know, we're gonna in order to get into the cool kids DAO, you need to prove like you need to have three of these in one wallet." Okay, you could use the recovery mechanism to get them all into one wallet, but that's an operation you chose to do. And yes, that outs that you, that that one wallet, uh, you know, is, is that, that that one wallet that those three things are one person. Oh, and you can because of the blockchain, you can see, hey, it transferred from wallet A to from address A to address B, address, you know. And we can we can't hide the 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 jump the hops between wallets because that's just the blockchain. And if someone knows, hey, the only mechanism that that token can move is through a soul bound mechanism. Clearly, the same entity must control those two accounts. But again, you don't have to do any of those actions. Um, but there is the blockchain does leave a perfect trail. So. So depending on how much you want to be known about how you're using this, you could choose to exercise data hygiene that gives very little away, or you could choose to exercise data hygiene that gives a lot away, in which Correct. case you'd have and, a lot and, of leakage. And I actively do both of those things, and probably a bunch of you do too. So like, I've got one account that I'm very public about, that I use for all sorts of things. It's got tons of pull-ops in it and different communities that I'm a part of. And then I have other wallets that... I try to be really, I'm sure I still screw up occasionally and that there's, that there's some, some people that can, that, that, that can uh, figure it out, but not just by looking on chain. They need to have some other data. Like, I don't know, a lot of people go to like Zerion and early on before I was really thinking, I went and clicked, put a whole bunch of my wallets into Zerion so I could check the balances. And then I was like, crap, those wallets have never been linked online, you know, on chain in any way, but I just told Zerion that they're all mine. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's the same with making bright ID connections. It's like you have to be care a little careful. You so I'm not careful because I don't care because I everybody knows my bright ID identifier. Everybody knows it. It's easy to find me in the graph. I don't care. But you could be a lot more careful than I am if you if you needed to or wanted to stay private you could um, be much more careful about your bright ID, be very judicious about who you connect to, make sure that it's not someone who's going to out you, 
and uh, only make the connections that you need to get to get done what you need to do. Um, and you you could, and we don't make any guarantees of this, but you could potentially stay anonymous within Bright ID and still be Bright ID verified. Um, it is very easy to slip up, just like it's very easy to slip up on blockchain. Um, it's very easy to just, like we were talking about, go to a conference, make a bunch of Bright ID connections. Now all those people know who you are on the Bright ID graph. And if someone wanted to tell someone else like, oh, hey, like, I, I just connected to Adam. Look, you can see on the graph. Now they know. Like they so so uh, yeah. You you have to. You, it, but it's all it's all in your hands. Like who you make connection with, who you make Bright ID connections with, is all up to you. Um, if you're very careful, you might be able to stay anonymous. And then the most important thing, though, is that regardless of whether people can find you on the graph, right? Uh, so only connect to people. Like if you don't want to be known to be connected to Kim Jong Un, don't make a bright ID connection with him because someone might be able. To, someone might figure out that you're Duke, and they might figure out that he's Kim Jong, and then they can prove, oh look, you're connected. But so if you don't want to be connected, or you know, if you've got a mistress and you don't want your wife to possibly see, like, don't connect to her on bright ID. So, so th th that's that's one set of issues. The, but the more important thing is that when you use your bright ID for an application, as opposed to making a connection, use it for an application, that application does not know which Bright ID user they are. You are. They only get an answer, a binary answer to a verification question of do they meet some qualification, but they, they do not get your Bright ID. They don't know which one you are on the graph. And like that's that's the that's the thing that the people that don't get Bright ID, they're like, oh this this is privacy problem. No, because if you use it right, the, the applications don't get it. Well, it's only a privacy problem if you do what we, like a lot of us did when Web2 started and all these like advertising profiles started getting built on us that we didn't know about. That was my fault. The reason that that big profile is out there on me, it was totally my fault. I didn't understand how the web worked when we all started doing this. And so I put all this information out there and now there's this fingerprint that you kind of just can't do anything about. But this is not that because this is only what it is. This is own bright ideas only proof of uniqueness and it doesn't have any of these other things. I've noticed all this stuff gets talked about, but it just goes back to like, well, all bright ID does is just prove that we have a unique human here. Right. And, and uh, so you do have to be careful when linking apps because uh, like the app could do something somewhat careless. So Let's say that, uh, so the app, like Philip said, the app can't know your, your actual Bright ID, but let's say that there were five different apps or even worse, let's say there's a hundred different apps that are all sharing the same, the same app, I guess you could say is what we, we call them apps in Bright ID. Sometimes we call them contexts, but let's say that a hundred apps are all actually sharing the same app and, um, and you don't, you don't pay attention to that fact. You're just like, oh, well, it accepted my bread ID. So a good example of this is Discord. We talked about how like in one Discord server knows that it's, they don't know your bread ID, but they know that you're the same bread ID user on all the other servers that you're using. So it could be the same way with apps. Let's say a bunch of different apps in the Ethereum ecosystem decide just for convenience that they're all gonna use the same Ethereum address. And so now you, you're using the same Ethereum address on all these different apps and your bright ID is linked to that same Ethereum address. Now apps A through Z know that, um, that you're using apps one through a hundred and they, they all kind of know that you're using the same app. So um, we haven't seen, uh, other than the Discord thing, we haven't seen to, like that become a problem yet. Um, so, but that's something to look out for because that's kind of that's kind of how we got into the web two problem was laziness on the part of the apps, just wanting to uh, you know not secure the data, share the data with each other. Well, I guess not even laziness. It's more just like greed on their part. It's like, well, if I share my users' data with you, will you share your users' data with me? Okay, good. Now we're both richer, and uh, you know things are worse for the users, but who cares? We don't care. So yeah, we have to be careful about stuff like that because it could creep into Bright ID as well. Um, we haven't seen it yet so far though. You go to an application, it uses Bright ID and then it says, hey, what's your name? 
and you give it your name. Well, now it knows your name. Well, Bright ID didn't give it your name, but you you, you did. <laughs> you and 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 some other application you asked for your asked for your name, and great, then they have your name, and now they know those two applications know that hey. Duke, Duke is using both of my applications. That had nothing to do with Bright ID. Yes, you commonly used Bright ID, but Bright ID didn't didn't wasn't the connecting thing. Didn't didn't give that. In, we didn't give the, your name to them. You did. They only know I'm Bright ID verified. They cannot point to me on the graph. Correct. Right. And so, if you want to be really careful about that and not have linking between apps, well, first of all, you have to avoid doing things like giving names and email addresses that are the same because that's going to give that's going to cause linkage. But if you want to be careful about Bright ID, um, apps in Bright ID are required to use some sort of unique identifier, and sometimes just out of convenience, they'll choose, let's say, an Ethereum address. So if you use the same Ethereum address across a bunch of different apps as your identifier, your unique identifier then that can link you between the apps. So if you want to be really careful about that, you just have to basically use a different Ethereum address for, for each app. That's how you would do it. And I, that's actually where Unitap comes in handy again, because you can just go to Unitap. There's no linking between your accounts. You can pick up, uh, like you can go back once a week and get a oh. fresh wallet address with um, gas yes. tokens in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. That's a good so that's tool. where we link all our addresses when we send ourselves gas to get the address going to begin yeah, when with. You send gas, exactly. If you're like, oh, I just made a new address, but it needs gas. So you use your other address to send it. Now there's a link on the blockchain linking those two accounts. If instead you went to Unitap and a week later got gas into a new address, there would be no link between those two addresses at all. And that technology, really the, the, the technology that no one can pinpoint you on BrightD has a name, right? blind signatures. So it's a technology that Bright D use specifically for the projects or applications cannot pinpoint you in, inside using the information that Bright D needs to process all the transactions and that kind of stuff. So no no one, no application knows who you are really. The only thing they know is that you are a Bright D user, a verified user. I'll also point out we are now an hour and 17 minutes in. Oh, yeah. Uh, so happy to, to answer any last burning things. Uh, but otherwise, we should, we should wrap. There is a question in the chat about how to get B2 verification. So I don't know if you want to address that. or. What, I, I mean, the, the, the short answer. So, so at, at this point, uh, the way you get B2 verification is by making already known bilateral. So each, each yeah. of you saying already known about the other person. You don't get it. The system is going to give in to you automatically. You need to start making connection with more people and the system will get it. I mean, the system yeah. will give it. And, and there's, no, there's no magic way to get it. It's, it's literally, you need to find people that already have B2 and make already known connections. Even short of, but, but even uh, short of that, simply make already known connections with people that you really do already know in the real world. Uh, like that, that's what's, that's eventually what's going to get you a good B2 score. Uh, you, you also need like that, that, that does need to link into people that already have B2. Cause if you and 10 friends just make already known connections and you're just in your own Island, that won't fix it. But once one of you does get B2, it, it will start to fix it. Um, yeah. so, you know, you just gotta be, you gotta be really part of, part of communities. Um, don't you know, but like, strangers. like, like Duke here, Duke has come to a number of these calls uh, and, you know, become more active in the community. I'm getting towards being willing to make an already known connection with him just because, because we've gotten to know each other in the, in the context of these meetings. Like that, that's, that's good enough. That's good enough for me. Uh, you know, I'm not ready to send him as my recovery connection, but already known yet. And suddenly he gets B2 and then he can start helping other people get B2. So already known doesn't mean face-to-face -face in the real world. It just means close enough connection through some medium that I know you, that we know each other. Yeah, it's, it's really a self-defined thing. Already acquainted, you know, is, is maybe a, a, a better, when I, when I think about it, my biggest criteria is uh, would, I, would I remember that I made that kind of connection with that person? That's, that's really, because like I, I, you know, I've got a bunch of connections with uh, just met connections with people. 
you know, if they walked up to me, I would have no idea who they were. Uh, you know, I, I made that verification. You know, I I met I met them briefly. I'm not going to remember them. I didn't have enough interactions. Um, yeah. So so already known is in 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 Aura. It's even more. You get you get more specificity in what you in what exactly you're saying uh, about the person. Sort of like how much. Uh, how big of a stamp of approval you're giving them. And in the long run, you will be like scored on, hey, there was a bunch of people you said were honest. Six months later, when we look, d d d does the graph believe that those people are good actors or are they bad actors? Like, were you, were you right? Over the test, you know, for the test of time, we always, we always believe that future us is smarter than current us when it comes to review of the graph. Um, so it's like, hey, you know, ooh, that, that a new region just popped up. Is it a civil region? Right now, I don't know. Six months from now, when I look at that that graph, it, it's going to be much more obvious what what it was. Like, did that turn out to be a good a good new honest region of the graph, or did it turn out to be a civil region of the graph? I don't know on day one. I will know six months later. So future, future you, you're saying our players need to be constantly reevaluating the connections that they make and what they say about those people mm -hmm. so that the information about them will remain true and keep the graph true. Yeah, in, in Aura, you're very much expected to, right? Anything, anything downstream of you kind of is, is your, especially uh, anything that directly you've done, it's your responsibility to make sure it stays accurate. So if I, if I mark you as honest, and then at some point, I stop believing that you're honest. It's my job to go and change my rating. Yeah, I think you gave a good definition there, Duke, of who should be an aura player and who should not. Um, because we we really expect that only 1% of Bright ID users are going to be aura players. Most people use Bright ID because they're trying to get verified for a certain app. They're going to do the minimum number of steps that they have to do to get verified. And then after that, they're going to be pretty lazy about it. That's just human nature. That's how all of us act. But 1% of the people are going to remain interested in Bright ID for whatever reason. Maybe they're using it for one of their own projects or for whatever reason, they're going to keep up with it. And they're instead of being lazy, they're going to um, you know, be willing to look at their connections and and um, see what they're doing. And those are the type of people that we need to be Aura players. And so we give them this toolbox that, uh, that gives them all the tools that they need to succeed with that. And hopefully in the future, we want Aura players to be paid for their, their work. Um, so we, we have a, a very basic mechanism that could work for that, but um, nothing yet as far as payment, but that is, that is our future plan that Aura players should get, get paid to do that. It's a valuable service. All right, we should, I'm gonna wrap this recording now.